Hello, my name is Jordan and I'm with the Shared Spaces team here at the University of Saskatchewan. In this second of two tutorials looking at the Mudbox modeling app, we will be sculpting a 3D model from beginning to end and adding digital paint onto the model as well. If you are totally new to working in 3D space, we recommend starting with our terminology and basics of working in 3D tutorial. Let's get started. To download Mudbox, start by going to autodesk.com. Make sure you're on the US version of the website, which you can select in the top right corner of the screen. Search for Modbox at the top of the page as well. You will have to make an account and either sign up for their 30 day free trial or purchase a subscription to Modbox for $15 per month or one of their other options. Select download free trial, home use, and fill out all of the required information. You will have to enter in your phone number to receive a code and authenticate your account. And finally, you can install Mudbox. Open the file that was downloaded and follow the on-screen instructions to finish your installation. When you open Mudbox for the first time, this is the first screen that you will see. It will give you quick tutorials to follow to explain any of the basic features of the app. There are options to start sculpting with the starting shape, which can be more basic or advanced depending on what you want to create. There's also an option to import an existing model. This is what we'll be using later on in the video. We'll start by clicking on the cube to demonstrate the basics of navigating the 3D environment. At the bottom of the screen, you have all of the different tools available for creating and editing within Mudbox. We won't be covering them all in these tutorials, so it's best to try each out and see what it does on your own. Some might work better for you depending on what piece of art you're trying to create. Some of the different tools you have are for sculpting, painting, and moving the object. Beside that are stamps and stencils that can be used for sculpting or painting later on. And on the right, we have different layers for sculpting and painting as well. Many of these will be explained later in the video or in the following video. Now to move around the 3D environment, you can press Ctrl and click, and that will let you rotate your camera around in 3D space. Ctrl and middle mouse will let you pan the camera around. And Ctrl and right click will let you zoom in and out. You can also use the scroll wheel to do the same thing. In the top right of the screen, we can quickly move around the object by using this gizmo and selecting different sides to view the left side, the front, the right, the back, and the top and bottom as well. The different lines on the screen show the axis that we are working with. Front to back is the Z axis. Left to right is the X axis. And up and down is the Y axis. If we select the move tools at the bottom of the screen, we can use the object tool to highlight the cube and the translate tool to move the cube along each axis. You can see how these numbers change on the right side of the screen. You can manually enter in the numbers here if you prefer. We can also rotate the object. and scale it as well, either along each axis or by keeping them all equal. Now to create our own 3D model, we're going to start with the sphere. You can use any of the basic shapes here as a starting point, depending on whichever is closest to your desired creation. Today we are going to be creating a simple penguin, so this sphere will be the best option for us. We are going to select Sculpt within our sculpting tools. Here we can see the ability to change the size and strength of our current tools. You can see the circle change size as we adjust the size of the brush. The brush size can also be changed by holding the B key while clicking and dragging. The strength can be changed the same way by holding the M key as shown by this line within the circle. 
Below these two settings, we have the option for mirroring. With this turned on, any changes we make to our object will be mirrored on whichever axis is chosen. The x-axis is the best option for trying to make something symmetrical like this. An invert function will let us remove material from our sculpture instead of adding onto it with this specific tool. While sculpting, we are going to make sure this tessellation option is turned on. This will add more polygons to our desired object as we sculpt so that it remains smooth and no single edge or vertice is stretched out. The fall off option will affect how our tool affects the sculpture, whether it is sculpting or painting. We'll speed up the whole process here for creating the penguin. The whole process took me about an hour or so, so we'll speed it up to just a few minutes. Feel free to skip ahead as needed to see the finished result or stop anywhere in between. Throughout this process, I mostly use the sculpt tool to add material on and invert it whenever I need to take anything away. The only other tool used is the smooth tool, which you can see at the bottom of the screen as well. You can hold the shift key while using the sculpt tool to quickly switch to the smooth tool, though you, so you don't have to constantly change back and forth. You will go back to sculpting once you let go of shift. Now that we have the final shape down, we can use the Reduce Mesh tool to try and get the amount of polygons down to a reasonable amount, so that works best with any other application we want to import it into. We're currently at 46,000 polygons, so we'll reduce that down to 10,000. You can see the final amount shown here under Target Face Count. For our Shared Spaces app, we want to get the vertice count to below 40,000, and ideally even under 20,000. 10,000 faces will get us closer to that target range, but it might need to be reduced even further if there are any issues. You can see the file shape of the object didn't change drastically, but it should be a lot easier to work with now when exporting. There are a couple of mesh errors that showed up here, um, but we can ignore those for the moment and just turn them off in the settings. Now we are going to begin painting. We'll select the diffuse color option to give our penguin a base layer that we can paint on top of. Now we can create a new paint layer. We can use the different stamps and stencils to give our brush tool some texture. We'll start by blocking out the colors of our penguin, adding on more layers as we need to, and then adding texture at the end. And now we have our final result.
to export your model, select it with the object tool, click on file, and export selection. Here you can select your file type between FBX, OBJ, and Mudbox's own mud file. You can select where to save it on your device, and finally give it a name, and then hit save. To export your texture, right click on one of your paint layers, select export group merged. You can name this file as well, select where it is saved and what file type you want to save as. Manipulating 3D objects is just one of the steps that we cover in our AR Production Pathways learning materials. Please visit our Shared Spaces website or YouTube channel to find other videos for your augmented reality workflow.